I don't know what he's like. Well, a, what a, like he just pranked me, and y'all like, I'm just. He got me all the way messed up. But anyways, happy New Year, y'all. 2021. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we coming. We're gonna be better this year. Like, well, I guess it's all on me because I'm the one who be bullshitting. Yep. But we're gonna try and change that this year. Have more content for you guys. Definitely. But right. um. Yeah, let's get to this video. So today we're reacting to Hulk versus Brody. Now, have you seen Dragon Ball Z? Nope. Yeah, okay, so this dude Broly from Dragon Ball Z, right? So this this dude, I'm gonna tell you right now, this dude is like super buff, like like this, like he buff like you? Well, you ain't buff. I am buff. In the inside, but um, <laughs> yeah, this dude like really buff, like how buff? Like. Dummy buff. You about to see like right, like this dude can like pick up an elephant buff. Yeah, okay. And then the Hulk, you know how strong Hulk is. Yeah. But you better see what Broly is though. My bad, my is on Broly. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Warner Bros. Pictures and HBO Max. Wonder Woman 1984 in theaters and HBO Max on December 25th. Streaming on HBO. Also, I think he was introduced in uh, I think Young Z Mordecai 3, if I'm not mistaken. Max for a limited time of 31 days for its theatrical release. Have you been aching for a movie that sparks hope and an escape, full heart and mystery and intense epic action? Look no further than Wonder Woman 1984 in theaters and HBO Max on December 25th. Slip into the world of the 1980s. Vibrant, sweet, and my access just like me. Hmm? I have a personal hope profile as a superhero, but will soon be dragged into a conflict that will decide the fate of this brave new world. Watch as Wonder Woman battles Maxwell Lord and the Cheetah in some of the most fun action scenes ever. Never put to build. Wonder Woman 1984 is in theaters at HBO Max on December 25th. Streaming on HBO Max for a limited time of 31 days from its theatrical release. As primal as the ground we walk on and the air we breathe, anger can keep us alive or doom us forever. Well, on that fun note, let's jump into our season finale. First up is the Incredible Hulk, Marvel's mean green world-breaking machine. Then there's Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a yes, death yes. battle. Huh? Yes, yes. Young Bruce Banner was a genius now the son of the <laughs> physicist Brian Banner. Who was just the absolute shittiest dad ever, complete with long murdering and super baby slapping. <laughs> Actually pretty distraught, Bruce's trauma due to parental abuse internalized itself as a second personality. An angry, childlike brute that just wanted to be left alone. Even with that angry shadow in his head, Bruce grew up to be a leader in the study of gamma radiation. So like a total nerd who probably got beat up all the time, he much. had that covered. During a gamma bomb test, Bruce was caught in the blast zone and, and absorbed enough seen radiation seen to, well, yeah, die. Except he kind of did well, not permanently. Instead, the bomb opened a door that let Bruce's alternate personality step into the world. Thus, using his anger, Bruce Banner transformed into the Incredible Hulk. The Hulk is one of the strongest weather hoppers in all of Marvel. He can lift a 150 billion ton mountain, shatter asteroids twice the size of Earth, leap into orbit from the ground, and even mess with the fabric of reality by punching. Whatever a time storm is, you bet your ass he can punch it. And break time. The Hulk's absurd power is tied to his rage. The angrier he gets, the stronger he becomes. And according to almighty gods like the Beyond, the dude's got no known upper limit. Like, so to be fair, crazy. his body can't always keep up and will revert to banner under too much pressure. Or too many puppies. <laughs> Emotions like rage are governed by an area of the brain known as the hypothalamus, which controls Bruce's transformation. If it's damaged, his life could be put in jeopardy. Like when Hawkeye pierced it with a special arrow Bruce himself designed. Good thing the Hulk's a total tank who can keep fighting for days on end. So he wanted to die? When, uh, I forgot his name already. No dude shoots the arrows in him? Nothing short of literal gods are strong enough to take him down. When he does take damage, his body can heal almost instantly. 
even if his flesh has been vaporized or he's been cut into literal pieces. The Hulk can adapt to any environment imaginable, whether that's just straight up holding energy or surviving the depths of space. He's even battled the warrior god Thor, who has thousands of years of combat experience and is fast enough to cross the universe in about five seconds, nearly 300 quadrillion times the speed of light. No wonder the world's so yeah. scared of him. He's a green apple flavored behemoth of destruction with the mind of a cranky four year old. While the classic Savage Hulk persona may be a childish brute, there are several, maybe even thousands of other personalities cooped up within Banner's shattered psyche. Joe Fixit is a street smart bouncer, Doc Green is a super genius, and the Devil Hulk is the father figure Bruce never had. It's like an all you can eat Hulk Emporium in Bruce's brain. We got your Dark Hulk, Mindless Hulk, Hulk Squared, and Claw, which is basically just Sad Hulk. It's kind of dumb. Despite seeing his human half as weak, Hulk and Bruce would finally unite against the cruel, uncaring world under a new persona. The Green Scar. He brought a world war to Earth and tore the superhero community a new asshole. And by finally letting go of Beauty Banner, the Hulk became the unstoppable force everyone's always feared. A world breaker. World is underselling it. The Savage Hulk once obliterated an entire universe with a thunderclap and bloody Hyperion with a single punch. So the him. same Hyperion who survived the collision of two universes unscathed. Which begs the question, how much more powerful is the Hulk at his maximum? <clears throat> uh, this one's all on me, Wiz. So, Hulk was once with this chick, Umar, ruler of the Dark Dimension. Okay. Hulk could only match her strength for six minutes, but he made up for it in round two when he came back as the Green Scar and kept Hulk smashing for hours. It's likely they went until dawn. That's a 12-hour session of Hulk smashing at most. My man. Well, that would make the Green Scar 120 times stronger than the Savage Hulk. Multiplying that by the energy of the two flying universes would yield 960 duovigintillion vigintillion joules. That's just a ridiculous number. All that from a single battle? Battle? Oh, sweet summer child whiz. That's not the kind of smashing I meant. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I think I just invented a new field of science. Uh, no, the science See, of the... I like this guy. Now, you might be thinking this gamma stuff is nuts. And you're right, because it's Satan magic. out, Gamma is actually directly connected to energy from Hell, drawn from Marvel's ultimate satanic being, the one below all. By using his powers, the Hulk is literally channeling the devil. It's also what kept him alive all these years. Every time Bruce dies, his soul is sent to Hell and can resurrect. Once returned to the world, his body will heal from whatever killed him. The dude literally can't die. And after a journey into the lowest plane of Hell, the Hulk even faced off against the One Below All and the ghost of his father. In the greatest therapy session of all time, he thunderclapped those two assholes to smithereens. Talk about cathartic. From one man with crippling daddy issues to another. Well done, sir. What else can you say but incredible? <laughs> The Saiyans, a brutal alien race, interstellar conquerors, and giant monkey men. These famous warriors are defined by three things. Their tenacity, their pride, and their rage, which fuels their world-destroying power. And no Saiyan can get even close to as pissed off as Broly. Despite being of low birth, the infant Broly was considered a prodigy by Saiyan scientists due to his impossibly high power level of 10,000, enough to survive a planetary explosion. What? Over 9,000? Alright, alright, I'm sorry, I got that out of my system. Anyway, baby Broly was grown up nice and happy until he was driven insane by baby Goku's incessant crying. Now, everyone complains that this is the lamest back story ever, but have you played Yoshi's Island? Yeah. Ah, don't it up. That's the original story, but with the new movie, that's no longer canon. However, despite developing different personalities, both of these Brolies are essentially the same character in different situations. The 2018 one is our primary source here, but we'll look at the original and similar sayings like Kale for more info. Whether it be jealousy for his own son or genuine fear of Broly's potential, Vegeta, the king of prince, abandoned Broly to a hellish backwater planet to die, with only his father Paragus as company. 
Just in time for Vegeta to get nuked. The planet, not the king. Well, I, I guess the king, too. All oh, thanks to the alien tyrant, Frieza. Nice job getting rid of your crazy strong saying, baby. Idiot. Ironically, after decades of isolation, Broly and Paragus were found by Frieza and drafted into his army to eliminate the Saiyans on Earth, Goku and Vegeta. The prince, not the planet, or the king. Thing is, Broly's not like the angry Saiyans. This guy's a gentle giant who would rather play with his big green alien dog than fight anybody. Paragus molded Broly into a deadly warrior whether he liked it or not. Like most Saiyans, Broly can harness Ki, or one's inner life force, as an energy to enhance his physicality. Or fire it from his hands in a super laser beam! Broly's bread and butter is his eraser cannon, <coughs> a green fastball that'll cross thousands of miles in seconds and vaporize planets. He can barf lasers with his gigantic roar, shower the landscape with blaster meteor, or just straight murder people with his gigantic orgasm! Gigantic <sighs> Omega Storm? Oh. That makes more sense. I'm gonna rename my dick that. Mm -hmm. His most powerful technique, though, is a small key bolt that Broly can feed to rapidly grow in size and consume entire worlds. The Omega Blaster. Broly's arsenal isn't just blowing stuff up, though. He can use his key for flight, telekinesis, and paralysis. Despite being stuck in the space boonies all his life, he's an adaptable fighter who can match seasoned veterans. Basically, he learns as he fights. And while most Saiyans get stronger every time they almost die, the Brawlmeister's strength is tied to his emotions. A.K.A. the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar? These power boosts are so great, he can match transformations like the Super Saiyan without even needing to transform. But don't worry, he can do that too. His wrath state roids him up and makes him as strong as a Saiyan great ape without all the fur. Or the shedding. Much to Frieza's chagrin, though, Broly had never learned to unlock Super Saiyan and could not compete with Goku and Vegeta's stronger form. <laughs> Solution? Murder Broly's dead to get him to transform! Despite the physical abuse he suffered at his father's no. hands, Paragus was still the only family Broly had, and losing that drove him over the edge. That's basically what happened to me when my dad lived! Today turned into a super... Oh, Although Broly did okay. 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 The Super Saiyan Vitamin C form has the perfect energy control and let him wail on Frieza for over an hour. And this time I mean wail as in fight. Um, right. Broly's power was so immense it even made Goku of all people turn tail and run. Goku was able to blast with Lord Beerus with enough force to potentially destroy all of Universe 7, a humongous cosmic structure shown in this symbolic model making the Dragon Ball universe nine times larger than our own. Based on this, the shockwaves from their clash propagated 240 quadrillion times faster than light. And after that, Goku became that powerful in his base form. Imagine how much stronger he was at Super Duper Pooper Super Saiyan. Or when fused with Vegeta into the almighty Gogeta, a being many times more powerful than the sum of his parts. Broly got into a dick measuring contest with a friggin' Super Saiyan squared and shattered reality! And at the peak of his rage, he became the warrior of myth, destined to appear once every thousand years. The legendary Super Saiyan. As a broccoli haired freak, legendary Broly's power is so great that he needs to constantly let it out or else he might self-destruct. I guess you could say his power is maximum! He's easily among the strongest foes Goku's got up against. That includes beings capable of shaking an infinite void so out of our gut or merging with the universe and affecting power. alternate timelines. In his original timeline, the Brawl survived his energy exploding out of him all at once. And in canon, he took dozens of attacks from Gogeta Blue without any visible damage after fighting for hours. His power comes at a cost. In his position state, Broly is wide open against an opponent who's just as strong, but far more skilled. 
And after taking enough damage, his race will hit its limits, and his power will fizzle out quick. He can even get knocked into weaker forms. Broly did lose yes, his fight through the right. Baron yeah. Square. But with new friends that decide to support him, and a new rival to teach him to tell his fury, the lonely Saiyan outcast finally got what his father could never give him. A family. No. Oh. But that means he has even more to lose. So watch out, because this Super Saiyan's temper is legendary. Sparky Hairman, what's this human play? Thank <laughs> you. 
interesting. Oh, I'm interesting. saying, when you watch oh, anime, you'll get where I'm coming from. So we, we won't watch anime together. No, we we not watching anime together. Why not? Why you hate watching anime? Why, like, why don't you? Watch I'm anime? not into anime. My brother. What? Actually, no. Two brothers. My twin got my brother mm-hmm. into anime. Good. He's good. I said, Dylan, you like this? Yes. I said, oh, no. We good. We gotta teach him young. Gotta teach him young. Maybe if, yeah, maybe if I was younger and I was watching anime, I probably would be into it. But we gotta teach him young. It's a no go for your girl. I'ma put I'ma put on one show for you. Just watch mm-hmm. one episode. No, I already watched it and it was boring. You wanna watch I don't know what I'ma put on though. That's the thing. It's like I was big on them. Like, what is this? Yeah, you know, when it's shop on you'll be like, What's this? You'll be like, Hmm, interesting. Let's watch another episode. But anyway, it's been your boy Jay. And the one and only Marie. And if you have anything for us to react to, please put it in the comments down, down below. below. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And turn on the post notifications. And make sure you watch our prank that then Marie reacted to very well. She loved it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> We're no longer friends. That's cool with me. And we out. Peace. <laughs> Bye.